Hey everybody, welcome back and how about a tutorial today? Um, I've had quite a people ask me quite a few times, hey, how do, you, um, how do you get a motor to move with Dragon Frame? There's a lot of little pieces that need to go into it and there's a lot of things that come together in order to accomplish that. When I first got into Dragon Frame, I didn't understand how it was supposed to interface with this crazy robot thing. All I knew is it was a software program and I'm like, well, how does it connect? How does it interface? What powers the motors? What does all that? And there's an entire other side to that than uh, just the Dragon Frame software. So I want to take a moment and show you how you move a motor with Dragon Frame, how you get from the program to actual physical movement. So I've got everything I need right here. So let's go ahead and take a look at the parts and I'll show you how all of this is wired. Then I'll show you how it connected with the computer. All right, let's go over all the different components here. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have is a good power supply. This is just a 12 volt, 10 amp power supply. Um, you can find these things on Amazon, uh, pretty much anywhere, you know, you can buy electronic parts. Uh, they're fairly inexpensive, and so far they generally tend to be very reliable, okay? Next thing you're gonna to wanna to make sure is that you have a stepper motor. Now, generally I recommend going with a bipolar stepper motor and four wire output. Um, but if you start getting into the six wire, things start getting a little bit weird. And I just, I, I prefer to stay out of that. And also just remember, you're looking for a stepper, not a servo. They look the same. Go with the stepper. Uh, you don't really want to do the servo unless you really know what you're doing, uh, which, you know, maybe we'll get into that someday. Next thing you know is a stepper driver. Now, this is a TB6600. I get these off Amazon for probably about $9 each. And quite frankly, they actually work really good. I use quite a few of them. They'll go up to uh, about four amps worth of power and uh, minimal form factor. Uh, so far, I've got probably about 30 or 40 of these uh, that have been in use or currently being used. And I've never had one go bad on me. They're actually pretty solid. And then the last piece you want is the computer, which is the Adreno. This is an Adreno AT Mega. This is the larger form factor. If you want to use eight motors, you want the bigger one. You don't want the smaller one. Okay. So those are the four pieces that you want to get. Now, generally, when I'm putting all this stuff together and wiring it, I'll start out by wiring up the power supply. You just run the voltage into it, and then from there, you have your output. You normally have a potentiometer here that you can adjust to make sure what your voltage is. It should be around 12 volts, but if you're not getting the, what you're expecting, that might be worth checking out. Moving on, it goes from the negative voltage and positive voltage out into the TB6600, right into here where you see it says ground and VCC in, okay? Then after that, you're gonna wanna wire up the motor. Now, wiring up the motor is pretty easy. Oh, make sure you have this powered off when you are wiring everything up. You know, go ahead, wire this part, but leave it unplugged. Do yourself a favor. Next, wire up the motor. And what we have here is a standard wiring configuration that most stepper drivers will accept if you have this same color pattern. That means from left to right, blue, red, green, black. Or you could even do it the other way around and have it reversed. It doesn't really matter as long as they, their neighbors are the same. So you can do uh, from uh, left to right, you can also do black, green, red, blue. Once you have that wired in, you wanna go ahead and make the logic connections for the Adreno. Now in the Adreno, you will see there is a four and five. Those are the two pins that we're going to be working with on this. I'll show you where to find the rest of the pinouts when we get into the dragon frame side and start uploading the software to this board. But for this sake, what we have is the step uh, pin is number four and then number five is the direction pin. Okay. And I have those going into where uh, number five direction pin, wait, yeah, five direction pin is going in here into direction positive and then the step is going into pulse positive. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna run a bridge wire between pulse negative, direct, uh, direction negative, enable negative, and then you're gonna run that wire all the way in to any one of the ground outputs you see on the Adreno. I'm choosing this one way at the corner, okay? Once you have all that wired up, you're pretty much ready to go. You'll wanna take, get a USB cable, plug it into your computer, okay, which I have over here, and, uh, we're pretty much ready to go for this part. Now, I'll tell you what, I do realize that this looks like an absolute mess. And I don't think anybody is really all that excited about the idea of just having this kind of stuff laying around. So you just, what, you have this in your robot, and you have this loose wires. 
Um, now you don't want that, so you're gonna wanna build some kind of a box or case in order to have everything. I'll show you that in a second. But something I'm doing here, just because I like to be nice, this is the Chronos Project DF Moco XL breakout board. And all it is is a circuit board that you just gotta put the header pins in and some of these screw terminals and then you can just sandwich it onto the Adreno, and then you can go directly to channel one, step and, dire step and direction, channel two, step and direction, three, four, all the way up to eight. It's just a way to simplify the wiring. And so you don't have, see, cause you don't wanna just have this kind of junk laying around. You're, or, you're gonna have problems here, you know? <laughs> Your cat's gonna come by and knock it out and screw it up, you know? So uh, if you're interested in this, go to the Dropbox link that's in the comments. I will have all the information, the entire board uh, files on there. And at the end of this, I'm also gonna show you how to take that information to DF Moco and order up your own run of boards. You can probably get about 10 of these made for maybe about 15 to $20. It's gonna be the best way to do it. I could sell these, but quite frankly, I don't like the idea of charging a lot for these. And uh, nickel and, and just selling these things will really just kind of nickel and dime time that I really just don't have to lick a lot of envelopes and send a lot of these out. So I'm going to donate out this out to the world for anybody to use. Now that we have everything set up, the next step is going to be to upload the code to the board. All right. Now, if you've never messed with Adreno before, there's a program called the IDE that you use in order to upload the software to the board. And it goes by USB connection. So if you haven't done before, what you're going to want to do is go into Google and go to 1.0.5 download and tell you what I go down to this learn autofruit.com this one should show up and in here once it opens you will have the options to download it uh, whichever one that you go for if you're Linux or Mac or Windows just take the appropriate one so I'll do Windows I'll install it it takes a few minutes to install I'm not going to show you the install process but you should be able to figure it out now, once you have it, the next step is you're going to want to locate the code that you're going to be uploading on here. Okay. So in this case, here we are. This is, this is the file structure in order to get it there. So it's in your C drive, program files, DZ, Dragon Frame 4, resources, Arc Motion Control, DF Moco. And within here, you're going to see it right here. All you got to do is after the uh, Adreno IDE is already installed, you just open it. And here it goes and here we are so this is the code that you need to load onto the adreno in order to get it to work the first thing you're going to want to do is go to tools and go to board and you're going to want to look for arduino at mega 2560 or mega adk all right that's the one you want and serial port is going to be whatever the adreno showed up on as a serial port once you have that you're going to click this little button up here to upload and you're going to see down here it says compiling sketch well in this case it says it's already in use if you run into that oh it's because i was already connected with the that all right if you run into that just try disconnecting and reconnecting the uh the the adreno itself the usb connection now i'm going to go ahead and try this again it says compiling sketch now it's uploading. You'll see lights blinking on the Adreno rapidly at this point. And then it'll say it's done uploading. Boom. There you go. You are ready to get this thing and connect it in the Dragon Frame and start moving this motor. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, once you're in Dragon Frame, what you're going to want to do is you're going to go up to Scene and go to Connections. Okay? From there, you're going to, I'll go ahead and add a new one. So you'll hit add connection device. You're going to want to go down to Adreno DF Moco arc Moco one location. You should see it say Adreno 18 mega 2560. And then the serial port that it's on. And remember 18 is what we had shown in the IDE. And that's what we see here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit connect. And now we're connected. So we now has that. But in order to move it, you have to build that axis. So, if you look up here on the top right, you got these different tiles over here. You're gonna to wanna to choose the one that looks like levers and gears. These are uh, just different place, diff different pages uh, that you will use when using Dragon Frame, but the lever and gears is what we need right now. Then down here over to the bottom left, you're gonna see a little plus symbol with a little, um, kind of like a little arc. 
You're going to go up here and you're going to just gonna name this motor. Okay, and that's going to be Art Moco 1, Channel 1, and then Max Jog Speed. I would set this at 10,000 and always start there. And now push left and right. There it goes. Look at that. Left and right. So here we are. So if you wanted to, say, start the motor in this position, you can just click on here, and that's going to set a keyframe. Drag your playhead out to what other frame you want. You can go to pretty much any number you want. Sometimes uh, a lot of my shoots go up to thousands of frames. We're just going to go over here, and let's just move the motor a little bit. Okay. And now we're going to lock that position in. And now we have this bezier uh, handles that we can use if we want to adjust this move. You know, make it move like a little bit in or out. But at this point, though, remember with the Adreno, this is not going to give you real time. Okay, so don't expect the real time moves. But what you can do is do stop motion and time last with this just fine. So once I have it set up, I can use these two little uh, arrows over here to bounce back and forth between the keyframes. And you should see that as you go back and forth, it always lines up to a perfect spot every single time. So that's pretty much it. That's all there is to it. Um, if you're, if this is all you need, then you're pretty much done. If you want to go a little bit further, I will show you how to get one of these breakout boards made. I don't know where I just put that one. I keep losing it. I've lost it like 10 times today and it will probably just ran off. It done run off. Anyway, I'll show you where to get all that information and then we can go ahead and, uh, I'll show you how to order that and where to go. And then you can get your own boards made. Um, and then... All, all I ask is if you're going to do that, maybe PayPal me five bucks or something like that, you know, over at Chris at Biolapse.com. Buy me a beer, you know. Uh, other than that, it's free for anybody that wants to use it. Uh, I do not authorize anybody to use it in order to manufacture and sell. So unfortunately, I think the minimum buck quantity you can buy is 10, but it's not going to cost you a lot of money. So if you want to continue, let's go take a look at that now. Okay, in order to get the DF Moco stuff going for the breakout boards, here's what you got to do. First, in the comments section of this video, there's going to be a Dropbox link. You're going to want to click on that. It's going to take you here, and you're going to see this DF Moco all large dot zip. This are these are the files that you need in order to purchase these. Okay. Next step, you're going to want to go to dfrobot.com. This is who I use for all my PCB manufacturing right now. And what you're going to do is down here on the left, you're going to click on PCB manufacturing. Okay. Now the dimensions on this, uh, 50, 50 millimeters, uh, I'll confirm the dimensions for you right here. Okay. But you're going to want to enter the dimensions two layer PCB quantity, 10, one design. I would generally recommend uh, one to 1 1.6 thickness PCB color, whatever color you want, you can make them red. Um, hassle is fine. One inch is fine. And then production time, uh, that's where it starts jumping up. It goes $44 for two working days. Five to six working days is $9.50. Okay. So what you are going to want to do is add this to your cart. And then first you're going to want to also, you're going to want to upload this file. So let me get that out of the way. And then we're going to find the file and you're just going to drag it in. and upload it and it'll say that it's here. Okay. Now I have had sometimes in the past where I did this, it didn't work. Don't worry. If they don't get the files, they will email you. Just make sure your order has the right email information. Then you're going to go to add to cart and then you can go check out. Okay. They're going to use DHL for delivery on this. In my experience, from the time of ordering a board to getting it, you're looking at around 10 days. Now, um, anything going on with supply chains, parts, manufacturing, whatever, I'm not exactly sure. But last time I ordered up circuit boards was probably about three weeks ago. Four, no, maybe about, maybe about two months ago. It's been a little while. But I did have those made and I got them within 10 days. So it goes pretty quick. Once you have them, then you're going to need to get header pins. And if you want to use those little terminals, you're going to want to get some of those terminal pins in there as well. Um, and I'll go ahead and put the specs, all that stuff for the parts of what you will need in the comments section. So once you have that, you're going to find that you can just plug it right onto this board. It's going to make your life a lot easier, especially if you want to do more than one motor. 
Um, and then if you want, you can kind of get things put together in a nice little package. Uh, I've built quite a few driver's boxes. I've got different ways of doing them. Uh, in fact, here, let's take a look at one of the older ones I used to use for my towers. Here's the inside of one of my driver boxes. As you see here, this is where all the motors connect. I use these uh, connectors up here and then I run them down into the individual drivers, as you can see here. And then this is an this is an older board I had set up that will actually use those little 3D printer drivers. And I used to use that on like pan tilt and stuff like that. But since then, I've moved all to these. Now, also something you're going to really want to keep in mind, which I have not said, which I need to make sure I edit and put in there, check your dip switches. Make sure that you have the right setup. You should probably just go ahead and start for 3200 micro step and then um, whatever the motor rating on the amp is and all the information about how to set the dip switches is on the top of the board. As you can see here, power supply runs power to all the different drivers. And then from there, I bridge out from these little outputs on this older style board into the drivers in order to get everything to work. So just kind of an example of one of these. Okay, I hope that was useful. I hope that kind of explains how to do it. It's not terribly difficult. I've done this quite a few times and it's just the same process with adding more motors. You just got to look as far as uh, where the information is in the, in the script as to what motors power or what pins power what motors. In fact, you know what? I'll even drop that in the comments just to make it a little bit easier. So, uh, like I said, um, if anybody wants to make their own board, you're more than welcome to. Um, if you want to buy me a beer, it's chris at biolapse.com. And, uh, you know, I hope that this stuff is useful and I hope that this helps people out. So, have a wonderful day and uh, just keep building.